Please join me in the call to worship. Happy Easter season. Today is the first day of the week. The, the joy of Easter still sings in our hearts. Breathe the breath of new life in your spirits. We open our hearts to all the wondrous work God has for us to do. Welcome to worship this glorious day. Let our lives be testimony to God's redeeming love. <laughs> Amen. Our opening hymn is Open My Eyes That I May See. join me in the opening prayer. Breathe the breath of new life into us, O Lord, that we may fully feel the power of your love 
and the awesome glory of the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, prepare us to receive your blessing and then to go from this place to be a blessing to others in your name. Amen. The Psalter reading this morning is Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his mighty firmament. Praise God for his mighty deeds. Praise God for his exceeding greatness. Praise God with trumpet sound. Praise God with lute and harp. Praise God with tambourine and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with sounding cymbals. Praise God with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just as we are, we bow before thee to dedicate our lives anew. Restore us, Lord, in trust and service that all things lasting rest in you. Our thoughts drift back to precious loved ones. When silence reigns, the only sound. Oh, that our thoughts be one in union. And that this place be hallowed ground. When skies above are dark and stormy, dear Lord, you seem so far away. We treasure words that you have spoken, and by your presence, when we pray, you alone, Lord. Know our longing for thy voice, the sweetest sound. Reassure us of your presence to these upon this hallowed ground. We trust in thee through joy and sorrow and in thy words that light our way you were here you understand lord how weak we are how hard we try let us rejoice with those in heaven our songs of praise with theirs resound. And thus, the ties are never broken. Lord, make this earth thy hallowed ground. Lord, make this earth thy hallowed ground. Good morning and welcome to Church on the Couch on this second Sunday of Easter. It is April 24th, 2022. I introduce to you our team today. Sue Candy, who is the organist and choir director at Penneville, is our music director today. And uh, Karen Fuller is our liturgist. And Diana Gardner is uh, providing special music today. Friends, I invite you to uh, join your hearts with mine as we bring both our joys and our uh, intercessions to God this morning. Join me in the morning prayer. Let us pray. God of grace, we are so joyful that uh, we are here together to proclaim the risen Christ and that we are able to worship even from our homes and celebrate worship together. 
We ask your continued blessing on all those who are gathered this day and those who are not able to be with us, as well as the worship leaders, this team that uh, week in and week out uh, joins in worship and lifting our voices in word and in song. Lord God, you know the prayers of your people. You know the celebrations in our, in our lives and you know the prayers on our hearts. We pray for everyone this day in their both their joys and in their needs for prayer. We lean in seeking to hear that one still voice, the voice of reassurance that we need this day, the voice of peace and comfort that we seek so desperately this day, the voice of you, O oh God, who whispers to us, who sings to us, who encourages us. May, may we hear your voice in whatever form it is today, and may we be reminded of how deeply, how deeply you love us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and that we pray together this day. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we sing together our hymn, Now the Green Blade Riseth. The Gospel reading is from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, who was called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. 
Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Fall fresh on each one of us gathered here so that both speaker and hearer will know your will for us today. Amen. Well, Thomas sure picked the wrong time to leave the room, didn't he? Only to come back and find out that Jesus had been there. It was only hours after Mary had first seen Jesus and she ran to tell the others. As they hum huddled in this room behind locked doors, they were afraid of who might come in for fear of their lives. And Jesus shows up. And Thomas missed it. I can just see the moment when Thomas returns to the room, everyone talking at once, excitedly telling him that they saw the risen Jesus. And he showed them the marks in his hands and his feet. And he missed it. It had to be an awful lot to absorb. I can only imagine the emotions that must have been going through Thomas's head as he's taking in all this information. Stunned by this news, maybe embarrassed that he missed it, maybe angry that he missed it, and maybe skeptical that it happened at all. That these guys who moments before were sitting around afraid for their lives now claim to have seen the risen Christ in that room. So Thomas said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Giving himself the title Doubting Thomas for eternity and lending his name to the catchphrase that means you only believe something if you witness it yourself. But does insisting that he witness it himself make him a doubter? Just because the others were there and they witnessed it firsthand, are they really more faithful than him? After all, hours earlier, Mary came and told them the same thing they had just told Thomas, and they weren't exclaiming and proclaiming the good news. But instead, they stayed put. They were behind locked doors. Later, after Thomas saw Jesus for himself and proclaimed belief, Jesus said, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. We often take that as a rebuke to Thomas for not believing without seeing. But I think the audience is wider than that. A message directed at Thomas, but meant to be heard by other disciples. You know, the ones who did, denied and fled days earlier. The ones who did not stay with Jesus at the moment of his death. The ones who saw the empty grave cloth but returned to where they were staying without looking any further. And to all those who believed only after seeing the risen Christ for themselves. And those words are meant for to be heard outside that room. Way outside that room. By every reader and hearer since then. And yet to come. Not as a rebuke, but as a reminder. Everyone who meets Jesus from then on will not believe because they've seen the wounds of the risen Christ up close. But they'll believe because they see how their own wounds have been cleansed and healed by the risen Christ. By Jesus. The power of Jesus. Who they didn't meet in a locked room but probably in a Sunday school room, in a sanctuary, in a hospital room, at a cemetery, in a garden, 
in a store in the parking lot, in a food pantry, and yes, maybe even a classroom. That witness, whatever it was, and however long they saw and heard it, changed them. And then they went from seeing to showing, from pupil to teacher, and their witness changed someone. And this cycle repeats itself over and over, revealing the risen and living Christ to us and hopefully to others around the world for generations to come. Jesus, who 50 days after his resurrection sent his Holy Spirit, commissioned those gathered that day saying, I sent you as my father sent me. And that commission has carried down from generation to generation, to us as individuals and to us as a church. You've heard from me before that we are the hands and feet of Jesus and that the eyes that we look out onto the world are Jesus's eyes. So that when we look out on the world, we see it not through our own lens, not through our limited worldview, but we see it the way Jesus sees the world. See, we are the living testimony that the risen Christ is at work in and through us. The words we speak are the gospel words that we have heard spoken by Jesus to us and to many. Our hands and feet are hands and feet that have been empowered to move into the world as Christ would have us move, as helpers, as healers, as disciples. So that everyone who meets Jesus from now on will not believe because they've seen the wounds of the risen Christ up close. But they'll believe because they see how their own wounds have been cleansed and healed by the power of Jesus Christ. Who they met through you in a Sunday school room where they learned the 23rd Psalm or the Lord's Prayer or so many lessons or so many songs. So many games. But more importantly, they saw God's love working through you. In the sanctuary where they were greeted by you, where they sang with you, where they prayed with you, where they worshiped God with you, and where they witnessed the love of Jesus Christ in and through you. Whether this was the first time they've ever been in that church or if they've been coming for a long time. in the hospital room, where you work or maybe you visit, at the funeral home or the cemetery where you reached out to them, you held their hand and celebrated their loved one's life with them, or any number of places where you live, where you work, where you play, we reveal Christ every day by the way we live. So the question for us as a church and as individuals becomes how and where do we reveal Christ? With hands that are clenched or hands that are open? Hands that hold down or hands that lift up? With feet that step over the undesirable crowd? Or step on those that we disagree with? The ones that step up and step in, where and when we're needed. Do our eyes reveal love and hope? And do we seek to real, reveal Christ in all places? Or just the safe ones, like here maybe? Or behind the comfort of our own locked doors? Or do we reveal Christ in some of the more out-of-the-way places? some of the uncomfortable places, maybe even some with locked doors that we call jail cells. Last week on Easter Sunday, we sang triumphantly. We even tapped eggs and proclaimed Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Maybe the songs are a little less triumphant. Maybe the eggs are packed away. 
that the season for revealing Christ never ends. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah and amen. Let us pray this prayer of confession together. We pray that we far too often want proof of everything, O Lord. We want proof that someone loves us. We want proof that we can trust in others. We want proof that everything in life is going to turn out all right. It is easy for us to point our finger at Thomas, who was honest about his fears. He had, been, he had seen so much healing and hope, but those hopes seemed dashed when Jesus died. Even the news of the resurrection did not completely lift the darkness from his life. Jesus said to him, just as he says to us, peace, be still. Do not doubt, but believe. Lord, forgive our unbelief. Forgive the many times when we think and act in ways which are hurtful, mean. Heal our wounds. Bind us up our spirits in the cords of your compassion. Help us to fully place our trust in you with our whole hearts and minds and spirits and souls. For we ask this in your blessed name. Amen. Friends, receive these words of assurance. Peace. Be still. Jesus came to bring us new life. Believe in him. And receive the blessings of peace and hope and love. Amen. Our closing hymn is Easter People Raise Your Voices. Every day to us is Easter with its resurrection song. Alleluia, alleluia, Easter people, let us sing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.